Did you guys hear? I mean, like, seriously, did you guys hear? There's a serial killer in Philadelphia. I'm not lying. Hey, beautiful people. Welcome back to episode two of my new series, Unsolved Mysteries and Makeup. And before we get into this week's episode, which I'm extremely excited about, let me just say, y'all really be out here clocking like y'all do. And I knew it was going to happen. I knew somebody was going to say something about something, but it wasn't in the comments. I actually only had one comment, but whatever. I got a message from somebody and she was just like, hey girl, your fingers are looking kind of long. Hmm. And I'm like, oh girl, first and foremost, throughout this whole quarantine situation i had to like really jump into overdrive when it came to my own personal upkeep so like i haven't had my eyebrows done at a salon in forever of course i was doing my lashes before now i'm on to doing my own nails and when i say like doing my own nails like from scratch every two maybe two and a half weeks i sit down i do my i have like a whole nail salon like a legit whole nail salon with um, I use poly gel, like different poly gels and so much stuff to put inside of them. So let me just show y'all. Okay. You see that? Can we get it to focus? I did that. That little heart thing. That was me. These little individual different color hearts in here. Oh, it won't focus for the life of me. Let me see if I do it like this. Ew. All that. I did all that. And like, if y'all don't know how hard it is to like do it on both hands. Sometimes I will do one hand one day and then get so exhausted that I'll do the, the next hand the next day. Or sometimes like even like a day and a half or two days later, I'll start the hand, but I won't actually finish it. So yeah, I put all my, my hard work, sweat and tears up in this joint. Absolutely. And like, I'm a creative person. So like, I like to create. My newest thing now is that I'm getting into candles. Like, Y'all don't understand because I'm terrified to go outside, depending on, you know, who it's around or, you know, where it's at. I find things to keep myself occupied at home. So this, this is my little candle and I wanted to do paraffin wax as well as gel wax. And I have like some crushed glass at the bottom of it. It actually doesn't look like but so bad. And you guys can see the um, naturally dried flowers I put in there. It actually smells good. So I made two candles. I am burning one as we speak. It actually really smells good, y'all. Like it actually really does. So I'm burning this one to see how it burns. Um, this one, I can tr completely drop the ball on. Um, the gel wasn't solidified before I poured the paraffin wax on top of it and it kind of went down into it. So that's very interesting. But yeah, you know, get into it, y'all. I'm a jack of all trades and I'm going to continue to be a jack of all trades. Um, like I said, I have so much going on. I have so many different endeavors that I'm trying to put my little paws into. So this week's look is going to be very basic because um i don't have anything else paired up with today next week i definitely will and so you guys are going to see a change in me um but yeah today's look is going to be very basic because that's how i feel basic and um yeah i'm just uh i'm just taking this as it comes um there are going to be more drastic changes with me because of what I'm trying to do on the side. I actually have to drop some weight. So this tea that I'm drinking is actually fat people tea. Um, I'm on like a tea regimen now and I did the keto diet last year and I actually was doing good with that. But I stopped doing it for personal reasons. Like I'm, I'm an emotional wreck and then like when things don't 
go how I need to go like I start eating my feelings and drinking my tears and it was just terrible so I'm trying to get back into that because I'm trying to live a bit of a healthier lifestyle and um, I just want to be more appealing for myself so um, hopefully over you know the next few months or so you guys will see a change in me and um, yeah just pray for me on this journey but let's get into this story because this should is crazy so just as a warning if you guys have not figured it out yet the fake ass rapper and his girlfriend is back loud as all hell once again um hopefully they don't start playing music because i just might commit suicide <laughs> because that's what he does all day long he plays music literally all day long i don't get it so um this episode of Unsolved Mysteries is called 13 Minutes. And it is called 13 Minutes for a damn good reason. Now, it's about um, the disappearance and uh, the eventual murder of Patrice Enders. Um, it's kind of like a very 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 sad story let me get my primer on real quick because y'all know i love me some good primer so um it's a very very sad story patrice was 38 years old when she went missing and she actually ended up going missing on my birthday back in 2004 which is April 15th, if you wanted to know. But um, she has a son named Pistol, Pistol Black, and that literally is his name, which I'm like in love with. Like, how dope is that for a name? His fucking name is Pistol Black. I don't know who named him, his mom or his dad, but that name is fucking epic. He could have became a, a, a celebrity based off the name alone. Pistol Black, if I have a son, I might name my son Pistol Pink. Don't judge me. Anyway, so she had a son named Pistol who was in high school at the time. I think Pistol was about 15 when um, his mother disappeared. Uh, he said that the day actually started off pretty normal. They did get into like a little tiff that day. It wasn't anything major, but he said he rushed out. Oh, I'm not gonna tie my hair up this week. I don't really have anything going on. I mean, I gotta run some errands, but whatever. Um, so yeah, he said that they got into a little tiff that morning, but other than that, um, it was a pretty, you know, pretty normal day. Uh, he actually ran out the door to hurry up and get to school because it was a girl at school that, um, he was dating. So at some point in time in his school day, um, it was like an officer that showed up to his class and the officer brought him down to the office and he was all like, son, have you spoken to your mother? And he like, nah, I ain't speak to her. Why would I speak to her? He's in school. Why would he speak to his mom? But I guess I could understand, like, you know, just in case it was something happened and she had called him and was like, hey, listen, this is what's going on, or text him, or even just left him a voicemail, just anything. So I guess I could kind of understand that. Um, so he said that he called his mom, and normally if, um, if she, she didn't answer, you know, at some point she would answer him back. She would call him back, should I say. So she called him three times, no answer at all. He said that at that moment he knew for a fact that something wasn't right. So Patrice was married and um, she was married to this guy named Rob. Rob was 20 years older than her. Now, this Rob character, I don't like him. 
at all. He's very creepy. Something about his eyes gives me the heebie-jeebies. I'm just like, mm -mm, I'm not feeling this Rob guy. Um, Rob has some things with him that I'm just like, I'm like, this is suspect. This is just way too suspect for me. I don't know how I feel about this. Like, watching Rob, because like I said before, they do interviews and just watching Rob give his interview, like, it just made me uncomfortable. It made me very, very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. Um, of course, you know, Rob had so many good things to say about Patrice, that was his wife. Um, he was 20 years older than her. And um, he said he met her one day when he went into her salon. I'm sorry, y'all. So, um, Rob did not meet Patrice at her salon. He met her at a salon. So she was running a chair at a salon and he needed to get his hair cut one day. So um, he stops in and he meets her. And, you know, he said from the get-go, he knew that he was meant to marry this girl, right? Well, woman, because she was older. Um, Rob actually helped Patrice get her own salon. That was her goal and her dream and everything. And let me tell you, as a salon owner, Patrice had quite the reputation. Um, like I said, Rob had all these good things to say about her. Her friends had so many good things to say about her. But another thing that her friends always said was that, you know, like, her son was her world. Like, 100%, without a doubt, her world. Like, her world revolved around Pistol. And you know who didn't like that? That motherfucking Rob. Now, according to Pistol, he says that his relationship with Rob was good for the first year. And after that, like, Rob started to like really change. And he just became a completely different person. Um, Rob and Patrice were together for, well, they were married for seven years. I'm not exactly sure how long they were together for all together. But my whole thing about it is, is that like, if I have a son and I've been dealing with you for a year and you start acting crazy towards my son, now we have a problem. And I mean, when I looked at her wedding photos, she looked extremely happy and you know, it's what she wanted, but I don't know, I don't know. Um, Rob is described as being like overly protective and extremely jealous. And this is something that not only Pistol says, but this is something that Patrice's friends say. So, you know, Rob is just like, oh, I'm supposed to be overly protective and so on and so forth. It's just a lot of things that he say that's like extremely creepy to me. And there's a lot of things that he does that's like crazy, it's so insane to me. Um, turn around and the day that Patrice goes missing, um, it's just a lot going on. Uh, she had a full roster of clients that she was supposed to see that day. So she's seen two clients in the morning and I'm gonna go over this timeline with you guys. She's seen two clients in the morning and when a third client called her to reschedule, she didn't answer. And if I'm not mistaken, the third client went to the salon and she wasn't there. And the client called the cops and was like, hey, listen something is going on i don't know what it is but i don't like it at all something doesn't feel yeah right. the cops were called and like i said at some point in time not too long later this is when pistol was pulled out of class um it is said by rob that hum and patrice had this amazing relationship they never argued. That's what he would say. Like, they would never argue. What's the point of arguing? It's not necessary. It brings negativity into the relationship. And then, according to uh, Pistol, he's like, well, no, they did argue. And he fought. And he said that there was times that he wouldn't even come out of his bedroom because of how Rob would act towards him. 
And, you know, he said that Rob would have snarky comments. His friends stopped coming over because of the things that Rob would say. And, um, yeah, like, everybody can talk about how, like, this Rob character was, like, a half shitty dude except for Rob himself. Of course he's gonna paint himself in the best light, but he paints him and Patrice's relationship as if it was fucking God's gift on earth. And I'm just like, wow, okay. There's so many discrepancies in this story already. Like, it's insane. Um, You know, Rob really hated Pistol. And when I say hate, like, I mean it, like, with all intensity, he hated Pistol. And the reason why I say that is because um, the day after Patrice goes missing, Rob changes the locks on the house. So this is the house that Rob, Pistol, and Patrice lived in. All of Pistol's belongings are in this house, and he changes the locks. That's like fucking insanity clue number one. Why would you change the locks? If you have nothing to hide or anything else like that, like, why would you change the locks? I don't really understand. I mean, this is your wife's son. All his belongings are here. Even if you don't want him to be there, just let him get his shit. And that's really, really sad because this is a teenager that, you know, his mom is somewhere out there. He don't know where she is. And you do this shit to him? Really, Rob? Fucking really? Fortunately, Pistol has his father that he can turn to. And unfortunately, his father is devastated because from what Pistol says, his mother and father were actually still best friends. They talked every single day, and when his mother went missing, his dad was devastated. And I can 100% understand that. So let's kind of go back to the day that everything happened when she went missing at the actual salon. Um, you know, police got the 911 call, and when they went out there, they, you know, started to look for evidence. So the craziest part about it is that there was cash missing from the register. The register was open, and cash was cash was missing, but um, I don't think it was all the cash. Um, so it kind of looked like it was a robbery, but at the same time, her purse was still in the shop. And, you know, like, for her purse to still be there, it's like, uh, I don't know. Um, there was food on the counter because when she went missing, apparently this was around her break time. And so the food that she was preparing to put in the microwave was on the counter. Um, I can't remember if the door was open or not, but I do think that that had something to do with it. The door being open. Um, basically the place was like in tip top shape order. And there wasn't really much for um, the police to go off of. They said that there was no real evidence and that was like the shocking part about it. Um, a lot of people think that it's somebody that she knew. Um, she was a friendly person and this was a hair salon. So if somebody stopped in, you know, she's not gonna be like, oh, get out. No, she's gonna talk to them. So it might not even have been somebody that she necessarily knew. Now, um, Patrice friends, as well as Pistol, think that Rob has something to do with it. And so do I. I'ma just put that out there. They think that Rob has something to do with it. Um, Pistol was like, I told police from day one, look into Rob. There's something that's not right about this man. You know, it's some bullshit going on with him. And from what the police say, they didn't necessarily have evidence to put him near, but then at the same time, you know, they're not gonna say that he's not a suspect. And this is like 15 years later, like the case is still open. So of course, Rob is still a, sus a suspect. And I think that he should be. Now, one of the things that Rob said during his interview that I thought was extremely alarming is that he was like, of course, I'm going to be a suspect. You know, they always think that the husband has something to do with it. He was like, but I have a degree in criminology. Sir, for the life of me, why would you need to mention that you have a degree in criminology? What was the purpose of you doing that? And another thing is that he was just like, they can't put me at the scene um, because I, what did he say? He was like, 
um, when Patrice went missing, I was getting gas from a gas station and I got the receipt and it's time stamped. And that was 45 minutes away. And then um, I went to work and at the time, the turnstile at work, you know, that's time stamp as well. So I'm just like, he's like really big on everything being time stamped. Like what's going on here? What is going on here? So let's go over the timeline of the day. Let's just go over the timeline. He's saying that shit is time stamped. Let's talk about what happened that day. All right. So. Patrice's friend and her first client, Pam Shepard, was supposed to be there at 8.50 a.m. So she got there on time. She said that Patrice was very, very, very distracted. And, you know, it just, it wasn't like her, right? Then turn around and Pam leaves at 11.05. So it sounds like Pam got a lot done, right? Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> And then um, now at 11.10, which is five minutes later, Paul Cantor arrives for a haircut. Um, Paul wasn't actually there that long. He was there until 11.37. And um, no, I'm sorry, Paul leaves at 11.27. Now they know what time Paul left because Paul actually got a phone call and so you know that was actually all able to be traced via cell phone tower so they knew that you know Paul had left the vicinity or whatnot because he was able to track that now dig this right at 11 37 um, there was a customer that called to change her appointment and she said the one thing that she noticed was that Patrice was really, really short with her. So with the first woman, Pam Shepard, Patrice was distracted. And then with um, this woman calling, I, I don't know her name. She said that, you know, Patrice was really short. So there was something going on, right? At 11.50, um, somebody else calls Patrice, another customer calls Patrice because she needs to change her appointment that she had that day. And what happens? Patrice doesn't answer. So what the fuck happened between 1137 and 1150? You guys get it? 13 minutes, 13 minutes, right? So this is the reason why the episode is called 13 minutes. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just like, it's, it's so insane that in such a short period of time, so much could happen. Um, there were two people that drove past around this time. Um, and they came forward separately. They have no affiliation with each other. The cops knew that they had no affiliation with each other, but they said the same thing. That around this time, they both rode past the salon and they seen um, two people standing outside. Now, the way the shop is, there's a space on the side and Patricia will always park her car there, but they said that her car wasn't there this time. Her car was, you know, just like, I don't know, it was just parked really, really weird. And then they said that there was a blue car that was pulled right up to the door, right? And um, one woman says that the car was a blue Chevy Lumina, but then the guy says that he thinks it was a Ford. And um, the woman said that she thought that it was a woman that was there talking to Patrice. Um, the guy said that he thinks that it was a guy with long hair, but the door of the salon was wide open. Um, the woman is actually like extremely scarred by this whole situation because she's just like if I would have stopped it's a possibility that you know Patrice would still be alive today if I just would have stopped I could have stopped whatever happened she was friends with Patrice she was friends with Patrice and you know like she's known Patrice for quite some time and um she just deeply regrets not stop and not, I think that's so fucking heartbreaking y'all like I think that is like extremely heartbreaking um to know that you could have been there to prevent something extremely bad happening to your friend 
and um ooh, didn't mean for that to happen it just it's just so many different moving parts to this whole story so um pistols in school one day and this is december 6 2005 so pistol was in school and um he's called down to the office again and by this point like he's used to it he's kind of like a problem child i mean and i can understand that a lot of times when things happen like children develop behavioral problems so he's called down to the office and his dad is there and um his dad is like listen you know um we found your mom and he's all like cool where is she and his dad is like i don't think you understand we found your mom's body so exactly 600 days later they found um patrice's body and what ended up happening was there was a church that was about 10 miles away from patrice's salon there were some volunteer workers working on the church and um, one of the guys realized that there were buzzards flying around the sky. Buzzards are uh, scavengers. Um, they're looking for food, you know, just a quick prey, something already dead that they can pick off of. And um, these two guys ended up having lunch and then one of the guys was like, well, I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna check it out and see what's going on. And that's when he found the skull. Cops went down there. They uh, basically just <sighs> dug down in the soil. You know, they, they really got down in there and they're trying to find whatever evidence they can find. Um, they actually did not find Patrice's complete body because at this point in time, she's just skeleton. It's, it's just bones. They didn't find everything. They found a little under half of her body and um, now they knew for a fact that she was dead. Uh, Pistol was devastated at one point in time, you know, before they found his mom, he was out there in the woods just walking for miles, screaming out her name, you know, just trying to find his mother, figure out what happened. Um, I don't know if Rob ever went out on any of these expeditions to go find Patrice, but if he didn't, I just wouldn't fucking be surprised. I just wouldn't, I'm sorry. I just think that Rob is the bad guy in this whole scenario and try and change my mind. Um, yeah, so when the remains are collected and taken to the funeral home, Rob is notified and what he does is he goes down to the funeral home and he asks them to assemble her body as best as possible. What, Rob, what? Yeah, so Rob being the creepy fella that he is, he gets the funeral home to assemble Patrice's body out on a table. And he goes and um, he says this is the last time that he's seen her as intact as she could possibly be um basically he goes and he cradles the body well he not the body he cradles the skull and you know he kisses her skull and tells her skull that he loves her meanwhile pistol nor his father gets any type of closure whatsoever and my whole thing about it is like, you know how much she loved her son. Why would you just not give that to him? Like you have to be an arrogant, vindictive, hateful motherfucker for you to just do that to the person that she loved the most in the world, that she loved the most. And it just like, I just, this is what I'm saying. Like, I just believe he's the bad guy in all of this. And he just feels no remorse. Like he openly admitted to, not liking Pistol and locking him out the house. And, you know, Pistol has never seen his mom ashes. He's never even seen the box that they're in. Like, not at all. You know, my grandmother, she passed away a couple years ago and like, I've at least seen the box that her ashes are in. People in my family at least have seen the box that her ashes are in. And that's, that's the thing about it is that like, closure to me, 
especially when like a situation like this where everything is just so all of a sudden there's no warning that closure to me is very very important and he kept that from this this family um i do know that patrice's dad also is a part of this uh episode of unsolved mysteries but um it's never mentioned whether he gets closure if you know he even talks to rob rob doesn't talk to anybody and he openly admitted that in the beginning of, of the episode like i don't care about what any of these people have to say because i don't talk to any of them none of them whatsoever and um Rob in a creepy fashion that he's in, he goes into, it looks like it might be like a garage or something, some type of storage area. And he pulls out the box that um, Patrice's uh, ashes and ran. And he says that for the first year after they found her remains, um, he slept with her ashes. Ooh. With her bag of ashes he slept with her bag of ashes and he was like you know she was like a teddy bear to me like this is how we slept in real life so this is how i went to sleep with her in death and i'm like okay and nobody thinks that this is weird rob nobody thinks that you're aware i, I just want to know like what does rob's family have to say about any of this stuff like what does his family have to say like do you guys think that rob is okay Rob's family, if you're out there, do you guys think that Rob is okay? Because honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Um, now, in an interesting turn of events. So, in a strange turn of events, um, there were actually two killers, two convicted killers that were interviewed. So, the first guy was Gary Hilton. He was a murderer. Um, and then there was, uh, Jeremy Jones. Jeremy Jones was actually a serial killer. So, uh, Gary Hilton did not admit to it, but Jeremy Jones did. So peep game, right guys? Jeremy says that he was riding through and one of the places that he likes to go is actually, uh, beauty salons. So the cops are like, wait a minute now, a beauty salon. He's like, yeah. He was like, so I went to this beauty salon and I met Patrice. I asked her to give me a jump. And then he described where the car was, like how the car was placed, which made sense because remember I said that Patrice's car wasn't where it normally is. It was moved. And they thought that that was really, really weird. They wasn't sure if the killer moved it or if she was giving somebody a jump. So he was like, yeah, she gave me a jump. Right? Now, Jeremy and says that he kidnapped her and he took her out to the woods. He says that he killed her and then he ended up throwing her off this bridge into the water. Mm, it seemed like it was pretty good, but the cop said that sometimes what happens is, is that people confess to murders that they could never possibly be a part of. And even though his seemed to line up at the time when they actually went back and they started checking all these places, there was no possible way in the world it could have been him. Later on, Jeremy ended up recanting his statement. So that was pretty Saudi, right? Very, very Saudi. Hold on. Let me do my setting spray real quick. You know how I love a good spray. Ooh, refreshing. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, um, all in all, Patrice's murderer was never found. Um, the one thing that the cops did say about why it didn't make sense when Jeremy said he threw off the bridge, because when they did find Patrice where she was in the woods, um, her body couldn't have gotten near from the river another thing is is that it was it was such like a crazy terrain like uphill downhill you know slopes and shit they said that they can't see somebody carrying her body from the salon that far or they didn't know if she was carried or if she was walked or you know what have you um now of course, 
because we're all professional detectives here. Reddit was all a buzz. Um, I love looking at Reddit when I'm looking up these cases and stuff because uh, I just feel like some of the theories be like real and I, I can believe them. Um, the one thing that Reddit said that I 100% agree with is that Rob, that whole old, I have a degree in uh, criminology, that was very, very suspicious. And the fact that he was so big on these timestamps, um, and I don't know if anybody else had this thought while I was telling the story, but I just feel like he could have just easily hired somebody. Could have easily hired somebody because um, during this whole process of interviewing, the one thing that Pistol said, and I forgot to mention this earlier, the one thing that Pistol said that uh, Rob said he had no knowledge of is that Patrice wanted a divorce. And Patrice's friends actually said the same thing. It was like, she was not happy with him anymore. She wanted to get the fuck out of there. You know, like, they did argue. They had problems. Now, this is my whole thing, Rob, is that when your girl got problems, her girls are going to know because she's going to talk to them. So for you to sit up here and be like, no, we never had problems and so on and so forth. I just, I just never believed that. And there's no such thing as the perfect relationship. There just isn't. There's no such thing as the perfect relationship. And things happen. Like, if y'all argue, you know, there's that's fine. Like, that comes with being with somebody. That comes with a marriage. I've been married before. So, like, we fucking argue. Like, what the hell? Like, it doesn't make you a bad person because you argue. What makes you a suspect is when you try and cover up these normal things that go on when you lock somebody's son out the house after they go missing and my whole thing about it is that if patrice would have showed up where you just going to be like oh you're back let me let your son in or let me explain to you what i did to your son so all in all guys this concludes my basic look for today because i'm feeling very basic but um that is the story of Patrice Enders, and it is still an open case, and I just feel so bad for her family and her friends. Not for that motherfucking Rob, though. Um, her son, Pistol, and his father and his grandfather, I, I hope that they find uh, comfort in the memories that they once shared with Patrice, all the pictures that they had with her, and you know the stories that they can tell about their time with her. Um, what I said in the beginning, guys, was 100% real. Um, there are reports that there is a serial killer here in Philadelphia. So if you're in Philadelphia or the tri-state area, please be careful. If you are the killer and you see this, knock it the fuck off. No, in all seriousness, though, um, just be aware of your surroundings and um, be aware of who you're with and at what point in time. And um, I don't know, like, it's not really much that I can say. Like, I don't really, I don't really go out and socialize anymore because I'm always working or I'm always trying to do something. So I just, I just don't really trust people. I've, I've gotten off of work at four o'clock in the morning before and I had somebody um, that pulled up on me and tried to get me to get into their, like, it was like an Escalade or a Yukon. It was something big. And I was just like, mm-mm. No, sir. No, not at all. This was in the winter time. He didn't have on a jacket, no nothing. He was like, come on, get in. And I was like, what? Oh, child. And I'm I'm not a small girl, so I was petrified when that happened. I was just like, oh, hell no. So, um, guys, be careful. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Um, if you haven't done so yet, hit that little button, that little bell, ding that bad boy. And you guys can always hit me up on social media under uh, an apple from Eve on Snapchat and Mixed Butterfly on Instagram. And until next time, i see you guys again. Bye.